Welcome to Between Heaven and Earth, an internet radio talk show where we help you connect spirit and divine guidance. Lisa Kay, your host, brings you shows that can enhance and transform your life with tips and new ideas for more happiness, abundance, and better relationships. Lisa is an expert on intuition and can show you how to strengthen your inner guidance to empower yourself. Each show is positive and uplifting to inspire your day. Her guest speakers are specialists on self-help, positive thinking, spirituality, and conscious living. Be the best that you can be with Between Heaven and Earth, conscious living for your soul. And angel blessings to everyone. Our show today is called Change Your Life by Connecting to Energy and Higher Consciousness. Imagine a life filled with happiness and purpose where you are connected with the divine and and the perfect aspect of yourself. You're protected and guided by loving angelic presence. Deep inside, you feel creative, passionate, and joyful. And all of that's reflected in to every moment of your daily life. In her book, Seven Cups of Consciousness, Change Your Life by Connecting to the Higher Realms, spiritual teacher and author Alea Dow shares how this kind of life can be possible when you learn to consciously connect with the resources in the higher realms. Alea is a sound healer, energetic practitioner, minister in the state of California, Doctor of Oriental Medicine in New Mexico and licensed acupuncturist in Colorado. She has been an alternative healer for 20 years. And Alea graduated from Lewis and Clark University in Portland, Oregon, and earned her master's degree in Oriental Medicine from the Southwest Acupuncture School in Santa Fe, New Mexico. She practiced in Telluride, Colorado for seven years before moving to Santa Barbara, California, where she serves as an international serves an international clientele as a spirit guide and sound healer. In 2001, Alea had an enlightenment experience, which enabled her to perceive other realms, hear the angelic beings, and increase her empath empathic and clairvoyant abilities. And her book, Seven Cups of Consciousness, with New World is with New World Library, uh, was released this past September. So welcome, Alea. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Oh, this is exciting. You have wonderful energy. I feel people's energy through um, just kind of communing and being with them, even if you're over the phone or on the Internet. (laughs) So I think it's really, really awesome. And uh, we got you on the phone, so this is great. And I wanted to uh, talk to you about, I guess, energy. You know, the first thing that actually comes to mind is why did you want to be a healer? What, what made you go into acupuncture? That's, that's a big thing that that's, um, from what I understand, it's many years of, of intense study. So why, why did you want to do that? I actually started off at a really young age being intrigued by health, healing, alternative medicine, spirituality, and consciousness. And I remember at the age of 14 or 15, actually taking a massage class with my mom and just the idea of touching and how that can heal. And then I went to college and during college, I went to the Oregon School of Massage and my senior year in college, I had my private practice as a massage therapist. And about a year after practicing as a massage therapist, I realized that I wanted to go a lot deeper and then a year later, went on and got my master's in Oriental wow. Medicine. And you, so you studied, over- you started early. <laughs> you started yes, really did, early when so. you were in high school. <laughs> and then, uh-huh. so, so you went from massage to Oriental Medicine. Was that a? Was it just because you were so into healing people from a you know from a touching therapy standpoint? Um, what was it about Oriental Medicine that drew you? I think that it was really working more at an organ level and a spirit level. With massage, you can definitely be working with people's energy. But my my massage school and training was really focused on, you know, the kinesiology and sports massage. And I actually was trading when I was in massage school with an acupuncturist. And so I would give her a massage because we had to have a certain number of people that we had worked on mm-hmm. during school And she would give me acupuncture. And I remember my very first acupuncture session was just mind-blowing. I started laughing hysterically and had this beautiful release. 
Really? You and were so, laughing while somebody's poking you with needles? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. That, and, that's and amazing. So it really triggered like, wow, this is an amazing medicine that I'd never been exposed to well, before. What did it feel so, like to you? Was it, was it just sort of like it changed your mood? Um, no, it touched something deep inside me that is beyond words. It really touched my spirit. And so, oh. and my physical body, right? I had back pain, shoulder pain, all of that went away. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just a depth of the medicine going so deeply to the core. And um, it made me want to help other people in that same way. Well, go the next step and then do the acupuncture, which is, I, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. It, it's funny because I, I go to an acupuncturist once in a while and I, I don't know what made me say this to him. Uh, he's my West, uh, East, my East West doctor, I, I call him because he's actually a, a, a med, uh, MD and he's an acupuncturist. Mm-hmm. And I said to him one day, I said, oh, you know, It'd be so cool if you do. Do you do like energy medicine too? And he laughed at me. He said, acupuncture is energy medicine. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh yeah, I forgot. It's it's just not Uh the needles. (laughs) It's, it's, um, it it is all that energy, that metaphysical energy that, uh, which I know the Chinese have studied for many, many, well, thousands and thousands of years where this, a uh, study of acupuncture kind of fell out of, came out of um, the study of energy and all that creates the universe and everything that is. And it's the core. It seems to be the core of what you do. It is. I, I basically, you know, started off with, at acupuncture, which I wouldn't say is the top layer, mm-hmm. but it is a surface layer. And they actually talk about how Tai Chi and Qigong is actually a much deeper form of medicine as opposed to acupuncture, which is the surface, you know, basically a needle penetrating skin. And so as I explored alternative healing, acupuncture, oral medicine, I was drawn deeper into the energy pathways and then the consciousness and then our energy fields that make up our psyche and then going even deeper to, well, where is that really coming from and finding um, an inner river of light that I call the divine mind. And other people call it that as well. And so it was, it's really been a wonderful journey to keep going deeper and reinventing myself as a healer. Oh, that's really neat. So the, now is the divine line the same thing as what they call the Tai Chi pole? Are you familiar with that? I am. And it is an inner river of light that flows up and down the front of the spine. And then there's oh. also another river of light that actually flows in the spine. Um, wow. They also call that the Shashimna. So yes. from my perspective, we actually have two rivers of light. One belongs to the soul and the other belongs to the body spirit. Wow. And and so what can we do with that? Do we, it just, is it just like our body, it just is, or is there something that that we, you know, without, or on our own or going to someone like you can do something with? Are we supposed to yeah, keep it that, like, you know... Yeah. <laughs> charge you definitely you're the you're the only one that can work it right it's not even my really? job or another healer or practitioner you're the only one that can get in there and um when we take an inhale we actually have the ability to pull ourselves into this inner river of light that flows up and down the front of our spine and i think of it as the saddle for our soul and then to recognize that our body has its own unique consciousness that is totally separate from us it's almost like the horse we ride Mm-hmm. Wow. So how, tell us about, um, and we've got about a minute before, no, actually, I'm, my brain is out to lunch. We've got a few minutes before we go to get a break. So tell us about your, um, your spiritually transformative experience and how did that coincide with all of the work that you've been doing in acupuncture and energy medicine? I had already been in the alternative realm for a good 10 years. I was a Doctor of Oriental Medicine, practicing acupuncture, practicing Reiki, had taken courses in psychic clairvoyant um, awareness, and in 2001 was lying on a sound table, which is actually a massage table filled with water and speakers are underneath vibrating the the water in the bladder. And um, during that sound healing session, my entire consciousness shifted literally in 30 seconds. It was like getting hit with a huge flash of white light. And then after the session, having a totally different perception of reality and aware of these other dimensions and realms and beings and guides and angels Mm -hmm. and hearing people's thoughts and feeling their feelings 
and understanding the core issue that they were maybe struggling with or working through and what their soul was really determined to attain and master. Wow. And, and so from that, that once, did, did that, did that last that experience? Yes. So, yeah, so after that you came out of the starting this? point, really? Mm-hmm. So do you walk around with that feeling still or did it shift for you? I do. I do. Really? So, uh-huh. I love that. <laughs> I would love that to happen to me. <laughs> That's awesome. It's pretty overwhelming at first. And so it forced me to, you know, kind of come up with these seven concepts or ideas or tools of navigating life with this level of awareness and sensitivity, so how learning these, how to turn it on and seven, off at will. These seven. Okay. So, but here you are, you have had this transformative experience um, and now you're, you've shifted. Uh, and you created these seven cups of consciousness, and we'll go into them in a minute. Uh, but for the rest of us, where we haven't had, like me, I haven't had that experience yet. So how, just start off and, and we'll come back after the break and go in, more into it. But how do we use these seven cups and, um, and, you, and you created them for yourself or for others? I cr- I created them for myself and tested them on my own life and then started using these seven concepts with clients and subscribers and essentially using these seven concepts to trigger a higher dimensional merge. It's when you connect with a higher vibrational aspect of yourself and in a very controlled, well, fairly controlled manner, start accessing higher states so that you don't have to have the huge two two by four cosmic event that knocks you off your feet. And like you what you had. Integrate that for three that's or four great. years. Oh, so yeah. you, oh, that's awesome. So we so we could do these seven cups of consciousness and then go through that same experience. That you, wow, that's so cool. I, I, I'm tingling all over. I, it's like exciting. <laughs> I want to go to this. We're going to go to break and we'll be, we'll be back with Alea Dow. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting to your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and help you realize the inner potential you have to heal every aspect of your life. So come heal yourself every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern, with your host, Monica Goyal. Namaste. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living. 
where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth. And we're, our guest today is Alea Dow, and she's talking to us about how you can go through these steps to apparently have a spiritually transformative experience. <laughs> am I am I kind of right, Alea? You are absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's what I want. I've been uh, trying to manifest that. Actually, I thought either you had to. Um, have some very rare oh you had to go meditate out on a mountain all by yourself under a banyan tree for 10 years or you had to have a near-death experience but it sounds like you you just have to read the book and read the book <laughs> and tools, your meditation and, and be patient and be patient, patient. you patient, know it's yes. like give it a year two years three years five years ten years to have a gentle mm-hmm. awakening that's very controlled Mm -hmm. that doesn't put you into huge states of disorientation or fear or um, really also using these seven cups to evolve your consciousness using your challenges. So we all have challenges and there are opportunities for growth. The the question and the variable is really knowing how to use those challenges, almost like the weights in a gym. So do you you use the, the, these cups to help you through your challenges? Absolutely. Ah, I see. And so how did you come up with these? I know that you said you've had this experience. You have now connected to oh, just a vast wealth of knowledge in the universal consciousness, I assume. Um, wh- was it channeled? Was it given to you? Or is it something you figured out? Um, it was probably a combination of mm. a lot of factors. It was me watching my own challenges and then connecting in with my guides, going into meditation, asking questions of ascended masters, deeply pondering the why, and then coming up with these formulas and concepts and then testing the concepts and formulas on myself and with my clients to make sure that they actually worked, Mm -hmm. finding out why they didn't work and how they can work in an even more efficient, empowered, clear way. Do you have a story of someone who's gone through some of this and and had some, some really cool results? I do. Something I'll use share. myself as an as an example. And actually, um, I have had myself in, per- in particular, and then also my clients, find beloved partners using these seven cups of consciousness. Wow. Yeah, let's, so let's, if you could, tell us about some people who have gone through it. Um, you don't have to use names or anything, but, you know, just because uh, I think, yeah. you know, that really is motivating for, for others. I'd like to know. As well. Yeah, I've had sev- several people actually um, were going through changes in their relationship. Relationships were ending, so divorce or breakups. And what I would do is walk them through the process of lifting all of their attachment and their desire for the beloved partner off of the partner they were letting go of and to start falling deeply in love with that inner light that flows within. And then as an individual gets deeper, more deeply connected with their essence and cultivates that self-love, then they actually have the ability to start connecting in, in the higher realms. It's like looking for your beloved partner on a higher floor, floor, who is also deeply in love with themselves. And you start to magnetically draw yourselves together in the higher realms and then you end up finding your beloved partner in the physical realm. For me, it took me three years of using this, these techniques to find mm-hmm. my beloved partner. I've had another client that I worked with, and it took her four years, another client two years, and another client in particular wow, but they seven did, years. So, but they did find – so would you say this is their soulmate? It is one of their beloved soulmates yes. that okay. has um, high capacity, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like. We I, need courage, we need love, and we need the willingness to do whatever it takes to maintain and create a healthy relationship with ourselves so we can be in healthy relationship with our partner. Sure. Makes total sense. So when someone comes to get your book and has the tools and, and the meditations and all that ready to go, what what's the first steps that they usually take with you? The first step is to really master bringing your awareness into your divine line river of life. And you do that using your inhale. And as soon as you are in this inner place, 
inner river, you're then able to start making requests to your energy self, which I call the higher self. And then we start employing the higher self to make energetic changes in the higher realms that we then experience that positive shift from that higher realm into the physical realm. So I really think of the physical dimension as a reflection of the higher realms, and it's essential to be able to bring yourself into that inner state of connection. So how do you do that? Perfect and whole. How do you get into the... You close your eyes Mm -hmm. and take your awareness off of the physical world. Uh And as we close our eyes, we start to bring our awareness into our inner world. Yes. And then you take an inhale, use your breath Mm -hmm. to pull yourself into this inner river of light that flows up and down the front of your spine. It's like a column or a waterfall. And then you use your exhale to actually anchor yourself into that inner column of light. And then you take another inhale, like your life depends on it, pulling all of your energy and awareness back into this inner river. Mm -hmm. using your exhale to ground yourself in so that literally within three breaths, you are in a divinely connected place. Wow. I love that. And I love that it's, um, you don't need anything special, like any special tools. (laughs) You don't have to go out and buy mantras. And yeah, and you don't need to go out and buy that, you know, that thousand dollar, you know, who's he thingamajig thing. (laughs) No, you don't. No, not at all. Before I actually, um, discovered this technique i think i probably purchased like four different healing devices that would move me into a state of deep connection that one of them was even called the god helmet and um (laughs) you know none of it none of it seemed to really touch i'm sure it works for a lot of people but it didn't really work for me and so i was like what can i do when i'm standing in the grocery store that immediately brings me into a place of deep connection and peace Wow. And and so you mentioned the breath several times and I find this fascinating, Um, mostly because when I learned energy healing, when I first did energy healing, uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I felt like I was guided to do certain things. And one of the things I was guided to do is to use my breath because that seemed to feel like it was flowing the energy. So I, I, I think I kind of stumble, stumbled on it. So could you ex- talk a little bit about how breath is connected to energy? Yeah, the breath actually will um, activate a flow in the inner river of light of our mm. soul essence, as well as it activates the flow of light in our body's divine line. Without the breath, we die. And so when you're consciously using your inhale to intentionally pull yourself into that place where you are divinely connected and in a state of oneness, Mm -hmm. it's incredibly powerful. And another technique or mechanism or idea of the breath is to literally think about it like barbells. It is your workout weight machine Mm -hmm. that can help you cultivate a deeper level of connection if you use it in a conscious way. So that that is the breath Um, and... and and where that you put your inhale. attention, yeah, both of those. Yep. So those are the barbells that you're strengthening your ability to connect. Yes, you're using your breath mm-hmm. literally like the barbells. Wow. And you are pulling yourself in. And every single time you take a conscious breath to pull yourself into this inner river, your connection to your light gets stronger. Wow. And are you, when you go through this, it, well, first of all, is this like a, a meditation? Would you say it's a meditation? Or is yes, this different? it can be a meditation okay. or it can be an exercise ah, um, or a protocol or a prayer, however you want to spin it and whatever, you know, it depends also on our time and our focus. If I only have three breaths of yeah. attention, yes. then I'm just going to take those three breaths to pull myself deep inside and then use the exhale to ground and anchor myself into that place. Now, would you be doing if this have- for longer, like 20 minutes? Right. So if I have five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, I could take 20 conscious breaths every single time pulling myself into this inner river and oh. only focusing on that. Huh. That's, that's, that's so exciting. <laughs> I'm getting, uh, <laughs> it, only because it's connecting a lot of things that I've experienced, but not really, you know, when you, um, I guess it's like you, when you're kind of the babe in the woods and you know, you're, you get, uh, Literally, you know, it's like, wow, look at this, look at the flower and look at, you know, but you don't, and the trees, you don't understand how it all comes together. And then someone like you comes along and puts all the pieces together. It's like, oh, that's why that worked. That's why that did that. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really exciting. And I, I wouldn't do more than 20 breaths in one mm-hmm. sitting, then let yourself integrate. 
So a lot mm-hmm. of the times with spiritual growth and evolution, we will overdo. And yes. then it's almost like we've eaten too much and we can't digest it. And what happens? You actually get constipated energetically. You stop oh. moving forward. Oh, really? And so no matter what you bring in, you can't, you haven't digested your last meal. And so mm. you can't digest the next one. So you have to and go then, on fast. Um, yeah, we kind of have to go on a fast. And I remember after three or four years of going to every retreat and teacher and mudra and mantra and modality, my guides eventually said to me, okay, Alea, time out. Oh. <laughs> Digest that which you have absorbed. And that meant <laughs> no reading of books, no going to any classes, just really? being in stillness and allowing myself to totally integrate everything I had absorbed. So it's it's sort of like you are the spiritual the spiritual um, the wanting the spiritual evolution and focused on it to the point where you're you're the junkie spirit junkie yeah you're the, and then you're just going externally for fulfillment instead mm-hmm. of starting to locate the inner wisdom that you have and start using your own inner gifts instead of thinking that somebody else has the answer for you right right. And it sounds like your book is what helps people rely on themselves. Is that right? Yeah, granted, it is one more book and it is one more tool, but (laughs) it does help you access your inner wisdom so that hopefully um, you become the finder as opposed to the seeker. Yeah, and I think sometimes the messages from the teachers who are, are trying to get us to be independent and not dependent, you know, still the, the wisdom in the words is all about that. Um, here, yeah. here are some processes, but now you make, you take it on your own and these are your own things. You don't need to go out and like you said, get the God helmet. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, that's great. Oh, you know, so we're going to go to break and then we are going to come back. I want to tell people how to reach you and get your book and get more information. Great. So I'll be right back. The Real Conscious Connection, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the conscious awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on The Rising Stars Show. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth on Ohm Times Radio, the Ohm Times Radio Network, and we're... We're talking to Alea Dow, and she's talking to us about how you can have your own spiritually transformative experience um, going through her process, and uh, she's got a lot of this in her book. And Alea, let's 
talk a little bit about uh, how people can reach you and get, uh, I guess, get your book. I've got your website here is cupsofconsciousness.com. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, great. Cupsofconsciousness.com. Cups. So, uh, also, I believe there you as listeners can get a free week of her daily Cups of Consciousness. And if you go to cupsofconsciousness.com, you can get the free samples of the cups. And also, if you want to buy her book, you can go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble and also the publisher, New World Library. So her book is called Seven Cups of Consciousness, Change Your Life by Connecting to the Higher Realms. And Alea Dow, Dow like uh, what Wayne Dyer talks about, the Dow all the time, D-A-O. So, and her first name is spelled L A L E Y A. So, Alea, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with people? Um, I think that there is a piece, and that is about attachment and responsibility. And my sense is that a lot of your listeners do want to make a change in the world, a positive impact. And so, when we start getting really attached and desiring for the vibration that we're holding deep inside to be one of peace, love, inner respect, and we're modeling that in the world, then we positively, empathically impact others, as opposed to wanting other people to be peaceful or respectful of the planet. We're actually holding that deep in our core and modeling that in the world. And so serving from that really co-creative place, as opposed to being entangled and then triggered and upset by the chaos or challenges that we see in the world. Mm, I like, I love that. And I, um, so going to connecting into your book and going to work with the tools that you have, that's one of the things that can be addressed. Yes. Absolutely. And it's all about bringing yourself into that inner river of light mm. and cultivating the, the qualities and the vibrations that you really value as opposed to wanting other people to value those things, you get to value it and then hold it deep in your core. And then that ends up actually supporting you, protecting you, inspiring you, and motivating you to move forward in your life in the appropriate manner. Ah, oh, I love that. I love that. So go to Alea's website at cupsofconsciousness.com and you can get her book and get some free samples of the cups, the meditations, and you'll be on your way. I'm going to go to a couple other announcements, then we'll get back to speaking with Alea about her work. So we have, my co-author and I have our book coming out called Grow Your Spiritual Business, and it's now available. It is released, they, the date was November 10th, but it's actually come out earlier, and you can get it now online, and mine is actually going to be delivered tomorrow. I can't wait to see the one that actually comes through Amazon. Um, and this is what Bob Olson, uh, the host of Afterlife TV and the author of Answers About the Afterlife, said about the book. From metaphysics to mindset and marketing, this comprehensive Bible of business growth packs more than a week-long workshop and in an easy-to-understand format. The authors share their secrets of success based on personal in the trenches experience as working practitioners. I enthusiastically recommend this book to any mind, body, spirit practitioner, practitioner from beginner to advanced. So that was a lovely uh, endorsement from Bob Olson, who is wonderful in what he does on afterlifetv.com. So you can go to the book's website at growyourspiritualbusinessbook.com and find out more or go to Amazon and just search for Grow Your Spiritual Business and it's there. And we have a lot of free giveaways that are going. So if you do buy the book, which I all hope you do, save your Amazon receipt and or if you get it on Barnes & Noble, save that receipt and because you're, I'm going to give you instructions on where you can send it so that you can get some freebies. We're going to give out some gifts. Uh, we're actually going to give bunch of training videos. Uh, there's one on how to develop ads online so that you can attract the right customers. Uh, Cindy's done that, my co-author, Cindy Griffith. And I've got some videos on how to start your spiritual business and how to get past maybe your uh, your doubts uh, about whether you should or how you should, what are the first steps, and also how to attract and resonate with your customer. And we also have some other swipe files that we call swipe files, which um, we're going to be actually giving you the 
real book proposal that we used to get our book published. We got our book published. We went, we sent it in within two weeks. Uh, we had a book contract and it was a great proposal. So I wanted to share that with you. Get that free if you send in your receipt for buying the book to us and you'll, the instructions will be at growyourspiritualbusinessbook.com. And just a quick one, I am teaching my Developing Your Intuition Level 1 in-person class this weekend. Uh, I do it once a year, and I just want to let you know it's come, and it will come again next year, but a year from now. And it's going to help you in, use your intuition to do all kinds of wonderful things, improve your relationships, make the most out of your career, solve complex problems quickly, and make the decisions that you need to make faster. And that's what I love about teaching people how to develop their intuition and also at some point using that inner guidance to, to go within and help you along your path to enlightenment. We go through all the steps from A to Z. Even if you don't feel you're intuitive, I have helped people go from not thinking that they have any intuition at all to being highly intuitive by the end of the weekend, and that's ha happening this weekend. So if you want to learn more about what I'm doing, go to lmk88.com. You can go to my website there and get, if you sign up, you can get some intuition tips that come about once a month, and also you'll get uh, 16 free intuition exercises that you can do on your own. There's an ebook that you automatically get. Just sign up, lmk88.com. And I have an announcement from our sponsor. Our sponsor is Dara Steinberg. Would you like to experience clarity about your life's direction? Have you lost your creative spark? Do you lack energy, feel overwhelmed or anxious? Well, Dara Steinberg is an intuitive clairvoyant healer who is passionate about helping people feel clear, calm, and excited about their direction in life. Get the support you need to save your life today. Make an appointment for an energy reading and healing with Dara. Visit heartofwisdomhealing.com. That's heartofwisdomhealing.com. And you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth, and we're sitting here with Alea Dow. And Alea, we're, we're back. We've got uh, some time here. Can, do you want to talk a little bit more about the, these cups? Is there one that is your favorite? Yeah. What if I just sort of briefly share the seven? and then that Oh, sure. I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you could do that. Overview. <laughs> so the, the first cup talks about the idea that we live in a multidimensional reality. The physical dimension is just one floor of the building that we have access to. And when you use your energy self, your higher self, you gain access to these other realms. You make the changes there. And then that actually reflects into the physical plane. So we're actually not using the physical dimension to make the changes. We're using the higher realms to make the changes. The second cup talks about the idea that you are never alone. You have guides and angels that encircle you that can help you and model right energy to you. The third cup talks about how to change your inner world. And as you change the energy that you're holding inside yourself, that is reflected to you in your outer life. The fourth cup is using your challenges to grow and evolve, kind of like weights in a gym. The fifth cup is the idea that your body is actually a nature spirit. You're riding in a physical human form, but you are not your body. The sixth cup is you have spiritual gifts, wisdom, and mastery that you have spent perhaps lifetimes cultivating. And the process of holding those gifts on yourself and modeling that in the world in a healthy, co-creative way of service. And the seventh cup, my favorite, you are perfect. There is a river of light that flows within you in your divine mind. And when you connect with that divine light, love that light, you move into a state of oneness and perfection. Wow. I, th that conjured up some questions for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> as always, <laughs> I'm infinitely curious. Um, Great. So the second one, you said you were never alone. Uh, you have angels and guides. How do you know and have you met, met them? The angels, the guides? Yes. And what, what are they like for them? you? You feel them. What do they, they feel like? They are etheric beings, right? They're not like aspects of me or fragments of my soul. They are their own separate entity, just like you or me. It's just mm. that they exist on a different floor. And so there is a, a more of an etheric experience when connecting with guides, team, angels, advisors. 
Um, sometimes we hear high pitch ringing in the ears and that can actually be the angelic realm singing, mm-hmm. talking, relaying information mm-hmm. to you. So they have a more etheric presence to them. And how do you, how do you morning, know, how do you actually know? Cause a lot of people ask this question, how do I know I'm not, you know, just imagining that they're there? Well, have you ever closed your eyes and had somebody come into the room and you could literally feel their presence, almost like, let's say you put on a headset and you're listening Mm -hmm. to music, but your eyes are closed and someone comes into the room and you just feel their presence. Or someone comes up behind you. Yeah. Yeah. And you can feel them before they touch you or before they say anything Mm -hmm. or before you even hear them. Mm -hmm. And so when you're connecting in with these beings and other dimensions, it is definitely subtle, but it's an awareness that we slowly cultivate over time. And again, the more connected you are inside yourself, connecting with your essence, the easier it is going to be to discern the presence of another being and their Mm -hmm. essence. And are they communicating? I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. If I'm not connected to myself, right, holding my awareness in my divine line, then it's going to be hard for me to be aware of these other beings. I see. But you had another really great question, I think, coming. Yeah. do, Do they communicate with you? Yes. And Absolutely. is it just, just through a feeling? How do they tell you what to do or tell you, not tell you what to do, but how do they tell you stuff? Sometimes it's actual words or it might be an image or a color or a sensation or a feeling or even in dream. Or I might hold the awareness of, I don't really know how to handle this situation. So I just imagine and invite this energetic part of me that I call the higher self to sit mm-hmm. in counsel in the higher realm. And we're all pondering it up there. And I'm just holding a container. I'm not making any decisions until I get that information from all different angles and really deeply think about how to respond in the most evolved way possible. Wow. So you can use them as a great resource. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love them. I love angels and and guides. Um, and you know, I've, it, 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 this resonates so strongly with me. Well, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, I have uh, more questions. <laughs> Great. We'll be back with Alea Dow. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. The name is Bond. James Bond. No, the name is Joe. The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Ohm Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on OMTimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on OMTimes Radio. 
and welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth, Conscious conscious Living for Your Soul. Um, and we're talking to Alea Dow about her book and the Seven Cups of Consciousness. And we were just going over the seven. And one of the ones that was on the list was Embrace Your Soul's Gifts. And my question was, Alea, what, what, are, what are your soul's gifts? They are the qualities and vibrations that you really value. Oh, is, is there so an you, example? Yeah, so think about one quality someone would use in a positive way to describe you. Hmm. Patient, kind, compassionate, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then recognize that that vibration quality is almost like a river of light flowing inside you that you may have spent lifetimes cultivating this very particular quality deep in your core. And that is actually one of your soul gifts. Wow. And you know what? Let's talk about, it just kind of came up. What if somebody feels that they don't have anything? How what do- is the one thing they value? Mm. You if know, so- you value it, that means you've attained it on some level deep inside. Hmm. Okay. So maybe um, I'm just I'm going through some some Taking examples. Integrity. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Or, I like that. Or respect, or kindness, or gentleness, or patience. What's the one thing that you really want somebody else to hold and do for you? What do you want? everyone in the world to embody. If you had a magic wand and you could make everybody respectful or everybody in a state of self-love, in order okay. for you to value something, that means that you've already cultivated deep inside. Because you and the you, journey is, you like it, you, you uh, respect it, you like it, it's something very important to you. Correct. And you, mm-hmm. which means that some part of your soul has actually focused on cultivating that for yourself. Ah, I see. Hmm. Uh, would it also be... Suppose, you know, you may value, um, oh, let's say, uh, sympathy, but you don't feel like you're very sympathetic, but you, you know, you feel that it's, it's such a wonderful thing that other people have, you know, so, so you get, that's still a mm-hmm. gift of yours, even though you feel you're, you're not a very good, good at it. <laughs> it, it is. Um, although what the loop that you might have gotten into is that when we have a gift, wisdom, mastery inside, and we want other people to be that way, it might be that we um, have taken responsibility for other people to cultivate that particular way of being. Mm -hmm. And then we start being empathically impacted by their lack of mastery of that. And we start to feel what it's like to not have mastery of sympathy or empathy or compassion Mm -hmm. or kindness. And now we're walking in somebody else's shoes, which builds compassion. (laughs) Yeah. But can be (laughs) really confusing. No, but this is good. Yeah, especially when we don't have discernment that the challenge that we're holding is actually not even our own. And what's really being asked for is that we hold that mastery inside ourselves and model that to other people, but not attached or desiring it of them, just Mm. of ourselves. So when we're more conscious of these things, it helps us grow. Is that how that works? Uh, Wow. Yeah, and then we start holding those gifts inside ourselves, and that positively impacts how we are supported in the world when we use our our gifts as our primary support mechanism and protection mechanism. Mm -hmm. Life starts to get lovely. Mm, That sounds wonderful. And and your favorite one is you are perfect. What does that mean? That is the core teaching that there is a light that flows within you that is divine, that you are the God energy, that there is um, a part of you that exists in the heart of source. I call it your divine spark. And that divine spark creates a reflection of light, which creates your divine line, which runs down the top, through the top of your head, down the front of your spine. And so when we start to bring ourselves into this inner river of light and tap into that divine spark, we feel where we are all one, which is a core teaching in all religion. Mm-hmm. But it's not creating the God outside you or the universe is doing this to me. It's really swallowing the personal responsibility. I am a divine being of light. And the only variable is how I perceive my divine connection. 
an ascended master holds their awareness in their divine line 100% or 99%. Mm -hmm. Whereas a soul who is not very aware of their divine connection is perceiving a lot of disconnection because the majority of their awareness is outside this inner river. I find that that to me, that enlightenment that, you know, the, the saints on earth who are in that, as you said, they are always aware of that connection, that they are that with the capital T. Yeah. I th- you know, yeah. that to me is enlightenment and that's where I'd love to be. Um, but it always seems so far away. It always seems like, you know, that um, it seems in- unattainable. So how do one inhale? Really? <laughs> one inhale. <laughs> cool. How do, really? <laughs> Tell they me more. Three at the most. <laughs> right. So that exercise of taking, you know, taking your awareness off the outer world, closing your eyes, and taking a deep breath in, like your life depends on it, and pulling yourself into the inner river. Mm. That brings you into a state of divine connection. The more you do it, the stronger it gets. It, so it's and, all in your head. Okay, go ahead. It's not really in your head because you have an energy self that you're really directing your energy self to bring more of your awareness into your divine line. And then as your higher self energy self cultivates this deeper level of divine connection, then you feel the ripple of it down here in the physical plane. And what does it feel like? In the Mm, physical? Peace, Mm -hmm. gentle, relaxation, an inner fullness, an Mm. inner love, an inner joy. Okay, and those are the. St- it's interesting uh, because I'm thinking about enlightenment and getting there. From what I understand, nirvana, um, that shift of consciousness. But it sounds like that's those are the, the 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 little steps getting there, right? Climbing to be there, or is it there? There um, is it being in tune with God and in, in these micro moments. I, I'm trying it to. Is because- okay. Yeah, I mean, when we go to the gym, we don't instantly get strong, right? It's like right. it might take 20 trips to the gym or three years mm. to really attain strength. And so if we think about the journey of enlightenment as slow, gentle, long process, it's going to take us lifetimes. Mm-hmm. And we start using our breath to pull ourselves more and more into that inner river, mm-hmm. the stronger it gets, the more gentle and graceful the ascent. Mm. And there is a phenomenon to keep in mind with evolution, and that is the remembering and the forgetting mm-hmm. and minding the gap. Remembering and, and master, forgetting. Okay. Remembering, remembering and, and forgetting. forgetting and mind the gap. Mind the gap. So an ascended master remembers their essence on their inhale, forgets their essence and expresses it on their exhale. Their next inhale, they remember their essence again. Ah. A them. being who is chasing the tail of enlightenment and wants a rush will forget themselves, remember themselves, and then forget themselves for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, maybe a whole lifetime. And then on that next inhale, when they remember, it's a huge rush. So the more evolved we get, the closer, the shorter the gap, and the less of a rush. Okay. So mind the gap, stop yeah. chasing the tail, remember yourself on your inhale, allow for the expression, the forgetting, and then when you inhale again, you remember yourself to a deeper degree than the breath before. Got it. Wow. Remember on the inhale, and they forget on the exhale, mm-hmm. and then... Forget, yeah. express, radiate... It's sort of like the mystery. Yeah. You're saying you're a, a, a being of curiosity, right? And yes. Like, what's this going to look like? How is this going to reflect? That is the moment where we are expressing ourselves. And then yeah. when we inhale, we pull ourselves back in and then we ponder, okay, and then how is this going to reflect into the outer world? Curiosity. Yes. Now, wh- how do you do this? How do you maintain this when life throws, you know, all kinds of yucky eggs at you and you know and we get all emotional and things are coming from left and right and uh, it's just and then we we I think what happens is, is we get overstressed and then emotion takes over and then we can't think straight so what are yeah. you what is your recommendation for that when you have calm moments you want to really strengthen your core connection to that place that is peaceful and calm 
that river of light flowing within you. Mm. You want to hold the space for your body to do that as well and your team so that when you do get into a stressful situation, you already have a really strong, peaceful baseline. So you might get a little frazzled, but then in 10 seconds or 20 seconds later, you can come right back to your divine connection. Even if you get, it happens for a moment. Cause I, I've been, um, now in my own life experiencing, you know, things from coming from all over, having less time to do the things that I want to do, the things that I need to do, whether it's, you know, re- relaxation. And then, you know, we all have life worries and so on. So if we take oh, yeah, those moments. Yeah, yeah. Or or the something else or the phone rings. Oh, right. <laughs> and right. it's like, oh. Um so even if we do it just for a moment or a little bit here or there, it sounds like what you're saying is that that's that does so much for us. Yeah, and you can also employ the other dimension. So let's say um you have two yeah. radio schedules, two sessions, and then your cat starts having diarrhea and you have to take it to the vet in between all of that right 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 in between we've got we actually have a few (laughs) seconds because we're actually at the end of our show (laughs) so let's say you're having that in the moment when you are rushing to the vet you take a deep breath in you pull yourself into your inner river and you see some part of you in a higher realm managing it with grace and ease and then you get reflected that gets reflected to you in the physical dimension and you handle it with much greater ease oh i love that Alaya, thank you so yes, much for joining world. us. Thank you. You're wonderful. Yes, and you I love so your energy. Much. We'll have to have to, you back. Absolutely. <laughs> Please it's come back. We'll talk more. Show. We I obviously, really oh, it was fun. We've been listening to he- Between Heaven and Earth, Conscious Living for Your Soul. Tune in next time right here on Own Times Radio. Thanks, everybody. Angel blessings. Bye. <laughs>